Hey, what's going on Facebook and YouTube? I hope you're doing well today. Um, I've had this question come up a couple of times over the last week and a bit, and it's been a long time since I've done one of these. So I figured, why not? The question that I've been getting specifically in our VIP group is around calendars and Zoom integration. We also had a question about Google Meet. If I have enough time today, I will go through that as well. But the idea being, how do you create a unique Zoom meeting link when a calendar appointment is booked? Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Um, one way is if you just want to use your personal same link every single time. And the second way is if you want to create a unique Zoom link every time a meeting is booked um, so that you can have a separate Zoom link meeting. I, I use my personal for a lot of them. Um, because I usually roll back to back to back meetings and I like to know who's in the waiting room and don't have to log off and then log back in. So there's a couple of reasons why you might want to do either or, but I'm going to show you guys how to do both, um, right now. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to need to do either yourself or your client. So if your client wants this done, you're going to have to get them to do this or help them do this because they need to log into their own Zoom account. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go into settings and then profile on that user account. Um, and then you're going to scroll all the way down almost to the bottom and you're going to go to your Zoom integrations here and just click on connect. So this is going to ask you to do a couple of things. What the heck is going on? All right. Well, I already connected it and I already gave it the permissions while I was testing all of this. So this is going to pop up and it's going to ask you to accept the permissions, log into your Zoom account um, so that you're all good to go. So that's step number one is you've got to connect your Zoom integration right there. And then you've got to connect your primary calendar here. So obviously this is a user specific thing. Make sure that you connect the right calendar um, to them here and then click save. Now the next thing that you're going to do, um, and I should clarify what I'm doing right now is I'm setting it up so that every time a meeting is booked, it's going to create a unique meeting location through zoom. So, um, next thing you're going to do is they can set their hours of availability as you normally would. And then you're going to come up to meeting location and you should now see zoom linked to their account. So you can select that, um, and then update their account just like that. Your meeting location just got updated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Thank you. High level. Um, okay. So now that we've done this on the user side, we're going to go and set this structure up on the calendar side. Um, so I've already got a couple of calendars in here. I'm just gonna pick a random one. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna create a new one just to show you guys how this all works. Now, if you want a unique individual Zoom link to be put into your calendar event, what you need to do is you need to do a round robin calendar. So we're gonna select round robin. We are going to add the user. So I'm just gonna go and select myself. Um, optimizing for availability or equal distribution doesn't really matter. Now, because I set Zoom as my default in the last step, um, it's going to automatically set it as my default in this step. If you didn't do that, um, you can come here and you can choose what you want to do like so. Um, so there you go. Zoom is now my default. So I'm just going to do Zoom test calendar. We're going to run through this. This is a test calendar. Um, we're going to do Zoom test calendar. So fun fact about uh, calendar booking slugs. Um, these here are actually system wide. So go high level wide, which means if I put something that somebody else already has, it's going to say, nope, you can't use that. So you got to get a little bit creative. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put like a, a client identifier in front of it and then what the calendar name is. Um, and that usually goes through pretty good. Select your calendar type. Um, this will be a Zoom test. And I'm just going to go with orange to separate it from all of my other blue stuff. Um, I don't really care about any of this. So we're going to go call that good. And then we're going to call the rest of this stuff good. And we're going to complete it. So now the theory is if I go and I create, where did that one go? There it is, Zoom test. I'm going to go create an appointment here. Um, actually, sorry, I do want to check one last thing, confirmation. And that I'm looking for the location, meeting location, which I think will just come out by default. Yeah, on this calendar, the location will come out by default. So there you go. We're going to save, save, save and get out of here. 
Okay, so let's go to the Zoom test calendar. We're gonna grab the permanent link and we're gonna go book. I'm gonna go book an appointment with myself just to show you guys how this all works. And again, when I do this live, it's kind of like, is it a pie on your face kind of thing because it doesn't work or are you gonna nail it the first time? Let's go try and find out. Um, I'm gonna use a random email. Not a random email, that's my personal email. Please don't email me at that. This is a test and schedule meeting. All right, the meeting has been confirmed and there is the unique Zoom link for that location. So now if I was to go into my Zoom, I don't know why it's not opening up. There we go. Nope, definitely not opening up for me. Uh, but regardless, that is a unique, so that is not my personal Zoom link. Um, so this is a unique Zoom meeting for this particular use case. Um, so that's how you set up Zoom. Now, I'm going to try something because I've never done this before. Uh, we're going to go to Zoom test and somebody else had a question about Google Meet and I just noticed this. Um, so I'm going to do that one and I'm going to see what happens. So you guys are going to figure this out with me live. I'm going to make a wild assumption and say that it's going to create a Google Meet event um, for me, but I have Google Meet turned off in my in my admin settings for my Google Workspace account. So this may or may not do anything. Uh, let's go Friday at 1.30. Let's go book it with myself. And let's see if the location changes here to a Google Meet location, which it did. So there you go. You can do both Google Meet and Zoom um, as long as you are logged into your Google email address. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is, hey, I, I just want to use my personal link every single time, which is what I do most of the time. Um there's a couple of calendars that I have that I don't do that with. But basically what you're going to do is instead of choosing these, you're actually going to go to custom and then it's going to allow you to update the meeting location. Then all you need to do is you need to copy your personal Zoom ID um, link and you're just going to paste it in there. Now, because I'm doing a live stream, it's not letting me. I wonder if I stop sharing my screen, if I can do it. Just give me one second. Let's go Zoom. No, it will not let me because I am already sharing my screen. But most of you should know where to go to find your personal Zoom link. Um, and if you do know where to find that, you paste it into here. And then every single meeting that gets booked with you will be using your personal Zoom link. Um, I recommend you turn waiting room on in Zoom. Um, so that people can't just jump in on an, on an existing meeting that you're having. But um, there's kind of three different ways to set your video locations for your high level calendar meeting locations. Um, if you've got any questions about that or you need any help, please feel free to DM me on Facebook, email me at adam at estimator.tools. Um, I'm always happy to help. And if you are looking for dedicated help, with Go High Level, please consider joining our VIP program. We do weekly live calls. In fact, last our last call on Wednesday, just yesterday, we actually helped one of our VIP members completely custom code um, buttons and things inside of a funnel that he was trying to do. And so we do some pretty unique things to help you guys level up with High Level. Um, and we kind of sometimes take control and help you guys build the things that you're not sure how to build. And we show everybody how to do it so that everybody can level up. Our goal with the VIP program is really to make sure that, you know, people that are in the VIP program become top 10 percenters at minimum on the go high level platform. And, and quite honestly, guys, it does not take much to get to the top 10% of power users with go high level. Most people have no idea how to use it. So our goal in the VIP group is to literally just make you guys absolute powerhouses inside the go high level platform. Um, to be able to learn how to do unique and custom things inside Go High Level for yourself and for your clients. So I will drop the link somewhere over here to join the VIP. Um, and we hope to see you on the other side. And if not, I hope you guys enjoyed the content here on the free group and on YouTube. Um, if you've got any questions or things that you're trying to figure out, uh, please drop questions in the GHL Mastery group. Um, that's my content. That's how I come up with these video ideas um, to help you guys inside Go High Level. So with that, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.